What up, guys? Get your Devin got here. You know, I thought I was over this shit. You know? This is actually another reason as to why I'm not fucking getting anywhere. You know, and it's not just because of these fucking record labels. It's obviously because of these stupid motherfuckers coming in and stealing my music knowing I can't fucking afford copyrights. Especially when I'm trying to work with a major dude like Stephen Hobbs. Like these motherfuckers constantly coming in, taking my shit, putting their own name on my production work, and then fucking claiming it and getting all the rights to it. And the reason I know that is because Hobbs came to me and spoke to me and was like, dude, like, why does this have another, you know, production name on it? Well, guess what? These motherfuckers decided to take one of the tracks I was working on for them. It was an older track that I decided to bring back. But I had actually posted up on my Reverb Nation on my original one a long time ago. Back when I first started out, before I had to delete my very original one and restart because of, you know, they can only have so much space on there for your stuff. Well, these motherfuckers decided to come on here, I guess, apparently, without me knowing it, you know, and somehow or other get a hold of that track and download it and upload it to a site called Audio Tool. And what Audio Tool is, it's kind of like FL Studios, but it's online. It allows you to do everything you need to do for music production, which is what I do. You guys know I do music production. I have FL Studios 12 Signature Producer Edition on top of me using programs like Audio Tool and Loop Labs. And like I used to use um, Soundation, but I don't use it as much anymore just because of the fact you're so limited on it. But. Those are just some of the stuff I use to name a few. And as you guys have seen, you know, I do produce my own work. My work is my own. But honestly, I'm sick and fucking tired of these guys coming in thinking they can take my shit and get away with it. Especially when I bust my fucking ass. Like, you know, I come in here, I fucking bust my ass to be able to work with guys that I look up to, like Stephen Hobbs, who's an amazing fucking artist. And for these motherfuckers to just come in and take my shit, it's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm getting fucking tired of it. I've dealt with this shit for years. And I'm getting fucking tired of it. It's fucking childish. Like, to all you motherfuckers out there taking my shit, y'all need to stop. I mean, seriously, just because I can't afford copyrights at this point in time, that still doesn't give me the fucking right to go on the internet and take my shit when I put it up there. How y'all motherfuckers are getting your hands on it, I don't know, but it needs to fucking stop. I'm getting fucking tired of it. You don't know how many days and nights I stay up busting my fucking ass. Just to get a shred. Just a little tiny shred of acknowledgement. And getting people to work with me by guys like Stephen Hobbs. Like seriously. You don't fucking get it. I don't have money for copyrights. Okay? I'm fucking poor as shit. I can't afford all that. But I can tell you one motherfucking thing, the minute that I do get the money, I am buying copyrights to all my shit. I am fucking buying everything. Yes, I go through a free copyright site right now, but what fucking good does that do? That's not going to fucking hold up in court for shit. So as soon as I get the money... I'm going to go in and buy copyrights to all my shit. Why these people feel they need to take my shit and claim it, I don't know. But it's like, dude, I'm a music artist, okay? 
I've busted my ass day and night. And I mean day and night. There are days where I'm up for literally like almost 24 to 48 hours working my ass off doing what I need to do just to freaking make it. Like seriously. I'm getting fucking tired of my shit being stolen from people. Especially when I work my fucking ass off on it. And then these artists turn around and don't believe me in the end. It's like, what the fuck? Like, who the fuck are you guys to take my work and claim it as your own, knowing well aware I bust my ass and put everything into, everything I've got into every single fucking track I make. Every single fucking track I make, every single beat, every instrumental, every song I do, I put my fucking heart, sweat, and tears, and blood into that shit. I work my ass off on every fucking track, and I'm getting fucking tired of it. I'm getting tired of my shit being stolen from assholes like you guys who want to take my shit. I'm fucking tired of it. Enough is enough. Like, y'all want to sit there and take my shit just because I look a little bit different? Like, really? Can you come up with any other fucking bullshit excuse? Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, what the fuck, man? Like, have some fucking respect for an artist from one to another. You don't see me going around taking your shit. You don't see me going around and, you know, taking other artists' shit. No. I work my ass off on every fucking thing I do. Everything I do musically, I've learned on my own and built on my own from the ground up by myself. Yes, I've done remixes. Yes, I did a Linkin Park remix album to honor Chester Bennington. But that's different. I'm not laying claim to his music. I'm only honoring him with remixed songs and mash up songs of other bands that I know that he would enjoy. But for you motherfuckers to go on to the internet and go on the sites like fucking Audio Tool and download my shit when they're put up as not download, that's fucked up. Like, seriously, that's beyond fucked up. How you guys are getting a hold of my music, I don't know, but it needs to fucking stop. Like, seriously. So, Hobbs, if you're watching this, man, I do apologize for these idiots. For taking my work like that and putting a different production on it, man. I do apologize, but just know... That every fucking thing I send you is my own. And even to this day I'm fighting back just to claim, reclaim all my shit that was stolen over the years. So don't worry man, everything I put out is my own. Like, I'm an honest, very hard working music artist. It, just, it pisses me off that people like these guys would come in and just take my shit and put their own production name into it, remix it, and lay a claim to it and put it out there for everybody else when they're the ones that are fucking thick as shit. Because when they do that, it makes me look fake. And I'm not the fake here. I never have been. Everything I've done, I've busted my ass off on. Every fucking day of my life, I bust my goddamn ass. Every second of every day, when I'm not doing shit like this, like doing live streams, or sleeping, or watching TV, I'm usually busting my ass. 24 fucking 7, I'm busting my ass and working on my shit. Whether I'm putting stuff up on YouTube, promoting my music, um, fighting back against record labels. Like, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm always doing something musically. I'm always working on something. No matter what I'm doing, I'm always constantly working on music. 24-7, non-stop. And you want to know why? Because I've got what it takes to make it. 
Because I'm willing to put in the blood, the sweat, the tears, and the fucking effort that it takes to do things the right way. But with these motherfuckers, it's really hard to fucking do that. Because they know damn well that I don't have money to buy a copyright. And I can already tell you one of the motherfuckers that I've got a beef with that likes to take my shit. His name's Chuck Stegel. He's a little fucking thief, and he's a hacker. He's hacked my emails, my Facebooks, fucking everything multiple times in the past. And he's even tried to steal some of my music in the past. So, honestly, I wouldn't put it past him to do shit like this now. And that's just it, dude. Like, that's the only way I can put it on. That's the only way you can ever get anywhere, dude. The only way you can ever get anywhere is by putting your music out there for exposure. Because unless you put it out there, you're not going to get any kind of exposure. Like, at all. That's why I do it. To put my stuff out there, to put my name out there and be like, hey, here's what I have to offer. Here's what I can do. That's the only way you get anywhere is by putting yourself out there like that. And like, for these people to just come up and take my shit though is like, it's fucking annoying. Like, dude, I thought we were, I thought I was over this shit. I thought I was past all this. I mean, I'm not saying that Chuck was necessarily the one to actually take my shit, but at the same time, I wouldn't fucking put it past the guy to do that. And the reason why I have issues with this guy is because, like, alright, me and him have a lot of bad blood with each other from the past. And I mean a lot of bad blood. Reason being, back in... 2010, 2011, 2012 ish. I don't know. It was like 2012, 2013 ish. You know, some of you guys might remember I was dating a girl named Heather at the time. We were together for almost three years. Well, he decided to go and try to hit on her and then make it look like it wasn't him that did it, saying that his Facebook was hacked. And what he doesn't realize is I know very well how he talks. I've known the guy for many years before that. We had actually met on a site called meetme.com, which before that it was called My Yearbook. And he hit on my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, dude, like, you need to stop and just back off. I was nice about it at first. And he backed off at first. And then he came back. I started just talking really nasty and like fucking, you know, dirty to her. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is your problem? And he actually went as far as to send, but he went as far as to send, you know, some dirty pictures of him. Yeah, guys, I may have to restart. I don't know. Guys, if I have to restart, I do apologize. And I want to try moving location see if that helps any. Alright guys, I may just have to start over, so hold on. Alright, I think we're good. But, you know, it's guys like Chuck that, you know, just... Really pissed me off. And, like, and I confronted him about it too. I freaking told him. I'm like dude I know it was you. So own up to it. And he never did. Like the dude never owned up to getting into my stuff. And anything like that. So I'm like. Okay what the fuck. Like who are you to take my stuff. Or even to hack into my stuff. I mean just because. You know. Like, I unfriended you and stopped being friends with you. Like, you know, that's no fucking reason to do, you know, what you were doing to me.
And, you know, granted, yeah, me and her did eventually split up, but, you know, it's people like this asshole Chuck Stegel that just, oh, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what are these people thinking when they go in and take my stuff? If it's because I look weird, fuck you. I don't give a fuck if I look weird to you. At least I bust my ass on every motherfucking thing I do. Like, for real. Like, and if you guys want to know what this guy looks like, I will message you guys personally. Um, I'll send you, like, the picture of, you know, what he looks like still to this fucking day. He's, honestly, he's creepy. Like, if you guys seen his wall, he is seriously questionable. Even now, he's like, dude, like, what the fuck? But, you know, it's people like him that just straight up just piss me off. And these people in general that want to take my shit, it's just like, why? Like, why the fuck are you guys doing this? Are you guys trying to stop me from making it? If so, good fucking luck because it ain't going to happen. Cause you want to know something? I bust my ass every fucking single day on every fucking thing I do. I don't have money for a publisher. I can't afford all that. So whoever took my shit and put other fucking production company names on it. Here's a fuck you because I'm not going to allow it anymore. I'm not going to sit there and let you fuckers steal my shit anymore. I'm done with it. I will for sure, dude. Like, I will definitely do that for sure, Chad. But, you know, it's like... And... If you guys know me, you guys know that I've followed Redcon 1 Music Group since the very beginning when they first started out. Like, you guys know that I'm a very big supporter. Like, even though I don't own their stuff, I can honestly say I actually have, you know, every single one of their albums downloaded from Spotify up to date. Like, I have every single freaking album downloaded, like... Their music is, it means the world to me. And for me to be able to work with somebody as amazing and as talented and gifted like Stephen Hobbs, who I've looked up to for a good while now, since I heard Red Come One Music Group, you know, like, you know, it's a true honor to be able to say, hey, I get to work with this guy. Oh yeah, definitely. Morning, Angel. What's up? And like I said, dude, like after this live stream, you know, I definitely will be. But also on a side note, there is something I do want to bring up just very briefly. And that's something that Angel knows about as well. And that's these people going around Facebook. <sighs> you know, if, if you guys follow Lincoln Park at all, you guys know that Chester was, you know, he committed suicide slash was murdered. The reason why I say slash was murdered is because investigators are still looking into it on Friday night of July 20th. Well, people on Facebook are continuing to bash on him, saying that he was a coward because he, you know, killed himself or whatever. Well, you want to know something? This is going on to those of you who are thinking that. Chester wasn't a coward. He had a lot going on with him. I mean, and to you guys that don't like Linkin Park, you know, all right, fine, I respect that. You know, I respect that you don't like Linkin Park. But just because you don't like them, that still doesn't give you the right to bash on somebody who's already passed away. At least show some kind of decency to the dead. Show some kind of, you know, 
remorse and decency for the guy. Have some fucking dignity. I mean, even if you don't like the band, that doesn't give you the right to fucking bash on him. He had a lot going on with him. He was battling depression, suicide, alcohol and drug addiction. He was battling demons from when his father fucking molested him from the ages of 7 to 13 years old. He was dealing with a lot. And not to mention the pressure of some of you guys, not you guys that are in the chat, but some of the one, other ones out there that might want to be watching this. For you guys to sit there starting drama over their new album, One More Light. Just because they took it in a different direction than Meteora or any of the other albums that they did in their past. I mean, yeah, I get that they started out heavy. But dude, bands evolve over fucking time. It's a proven fact. Point in case, and a lot of you might not know this, but Kid Rock. He went from doing freaking straight up rock to doing country. I don't either, sis, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, either way, for those of you that are bashing on him, you know, please fucking stop, dude. Like, have some respect for the man. He's passed away. Like, I mean, even if you don't like somebody, like, I would... I would never bash on anyone who's passed. Like, even if they were my worst fucking enemy, I still wouldn't do it. I still would show, you know, some respect. Even though they're past, I would still show some kind of, you know, decency and respect towards them. And I mean, for all these people out there that are just bashing on him, just because, you know... He either took his own life or was murdered or however he was killed. It doesn't fucking matter. Like how he died. I mean it matters to you know obviously me and a few others. Because you know we just want the truth. That's all we want. We don't care how it happened. We just want to know how and why. Like we just want the truth of what happened. Because if you guys know me. And have known me for a long, long, long time. Like back when Facebook first started out. Kind of long time. You guys know I have been following Lincoln Park. Since they very first started out. Way back in the 2000s. I grew up on Lincoln Park. Like and to be honest with you. Lincoln Park's music has saved my life multiple times over the years. Because I myself have battled with depression. And. You know, I battled a lot of these demons that a lot of people face. Granted, they may not be, you know, like, specifically, you know, suicide or alcohol addiction or drug addiction or anything like that. But they've, I can honestly say, you know, suicide, I've come across a couple of times in my life. And, you know, Linkin Park's music, you know, really helped me to, you know get my head right into not be in those situations. They really helped me out of those situations and, you know, got me into a better positive state. So yeah, initially when I first found out about Chester's death, I'll admit, I fucking bawled like a baby. The reason why? Because I looked up, <clears throat> I looked up to, <clears throat> damn, sorry guys. But, you know, I looked up to Chester. I really did. I looked up to him. The dude was one of the greatest vocalists and lyricists of our time. Hell, he was one of the greatest minds of our times musically. For our generation, he was one of the best. So yeah, it sucks that, you know, he was either killed or murdered. But either way, for all you guys out there talking shit, you guys need to fucking stop. He's dead. He's gone. Leave the man alone and let him rest in peace. I mean, you don't have that right to sit there and bash on him like that. Because honestly, it pisses me off. Like, 
You don't see me going around doing that to anybody who died. Even if I don't like them, I would never do that. Ever. It's called respect. Learn it. But, you know, that's that. But the main thing is, you know, I'm tired of people taking my music from me. You know, I bust my ass every day working on beats and, you know, new dubstep tracks for you guys. And, like, I work my ass off every day. Because let me tell you guys something. The last time I ever put out a full album within 24 hours was when I was with the record label Killer Clown Sounds, which is an underground music label that I had left because they were not treating me right. And I'll admit, you know, yes, I did co-own the label. I helped bring it up to what it is now, which is over a thousand fucking people on there. Like, you know, like literally over a thousand fucking people liking the page and putting it out there. But the reason I left Killer Clown Sounds is because, like I said, I was not being treated fairly. Um, you know, they refused to pay me. Like, they were like, oh, no, you got to do it for free. And it's like, motherfucker. Like, there's one thing I do follow by every time. And I've brought this up multiple times. Free never paid the bills. I've got mouths to feed. And if you guys are wondering who said that, courtesy of Soldier Hard, or if you guys have them on your friends list, just or friends list, Jeff Barrelero. That's something I learned really quick in the music industry is free never paid the bills. I got mouths to feed. And for me, that means, you know, I can't do shit for free. Like, you know, I got stuff that I need to pay for. I got stuff that I want to do with my life, like get a car, get a license, you know, and eventually possibly even get my own place if I can. But I can tell you guys one thing. The first two things I'm doing once I can get the money is first thing I'm doing is buying a new computer so I can continue all this on and, you know, make even better stuff. And the second thing I'm doing is I'm fucking buying copyrights to all my stuff. Those are the first two things I'm doing is buying a brand new PC or a laptop or computer or whatever I can afford and buying copyrights to all my stuff. Because once I have those two things, I'm good. I'm barely, like, I fight with this thing every fucking day. This thing's 10 plus years old that I'm on now, my computer. It's literally 10 plus years old. How it's running is beyond me, honestly. Like, it is honestly beyond my comprehension of how this thing even still turns on after all these years. Let alone running Windows 7 and a powerful creation program like FL Studios 12 Signature Producer Edition. And if you guys are wondering how I got FL Studios 12 Signature Producer Edition, it's actually courtesy of a friend of mine, um, P1, or also known as Possessed One, or BZB Easy, but if you guys know him personally, Bob Heeks PO. So shout out to you, man. I appreciate it, dude. But, you know, he does music as well. Um, he's unsigned, but he doesn't want to make it in the music industry. He's more about helping people to make it in the music industry. And he's helped me out a lot. I mean, he does have skills musically. He's fucking, honestly, one of the best in the underground. But, you know, he doesn't want that for himself. Like, he wants that for me. He wants to see me make it. He wants to see me win after all these years. Because Zach, also known as Bob Heeks P.O., or like I said, P1, or Possessed One, you know, he was there with me from the very, very, very beginning. Like, he found me in a group I was part of, like, way back in 2010. And, you know, ever since we've worked on and off together, we stopped talking for a while because of some shit going down. But, 
you know, we've gotten back in touch since then and have been working together ever since. So, I mean, he does push my music a lot, actually. He's always putting my stuff out there, always taking it to clubs, always introducing me to people that, like, through video chat or voice chat, that are always saying, dude, I love your music, you know, keep it going and stuff like that. You know, and that's part of what drives me to continue to produce music for you guys to work with, to produce these mu these beats for you guys to, you know, do your stuff on. That's what keeps me going along with, you know, all the love and the support. Like, that's what keeps me fucking going is the love and the support and the seeing you guys wanting me to make it. Like, that means the fucking world to me. Like, literally, for those of you that don't know what my day consists of, it's literally wake up, turn the TV on, see what's on TV, grab a cup of coffee, and then I go right to fucking work on FL Studios or Audio Tool or whatever I feel like using at that time. That is literally my schedule for the entire fucking day. Like, I literally wake up, I work on shit. I promote shit, and I do everything I need to to get out there. That's my life on a daily basis. That has been my life since 2010, 2011. I put in a lot of fucking years and a lot of fucking hard work to get where I'm at now. I've taken a lot of shit from a lot of motherfuckers. But... This shit that these guys are doing to me, it needs to fucking stop. Like, seriously. I mean, yes, I've had the amazing, amazing honor to work with, you know, some amazing people. Like, uh, more recently, like, if you guys are, if you guys follow the dubstep world at all. You know, I just, you know, not that long ago, got the very awesome and amazing opportunity to work with one of the dubstep groups that I first listened to, which was Nightcore. And if you guys know Julian Solano, he's one of the guys who founded Nightcore. And the way I got to be friends with him was actually pretty odd. He actually liked my Shadow Link art page. And that's how me and him got connected. I didn't even know that he was a part of Nightcore until he fucking told me. Because I was sitting down talking to him. I'm like, yeah, dude, like, you know, thank you for, you know, liking my artwork, dude. Like, it means the world to me for you liking my art page and stuff like that. And I was talking to him and stuff. You know, we got to talking. I was telling him, hey, you know, like, I also do music. Why don't you check my stuff out? And... He was like, oh, dude, like, you know, that's awesome. Like, I do music as well. And I was like, really, like, what kind of music do you do? Like, what's up? Like, what style do you do? Because I can't adapt to any style easily. And that's when he told me that, you know, he does dubstep. And he's part of this group called Nightcore. And I'm like, dude, like, I freaking love Nightcore. Like, that's, like, one of the first dubstep groups, like, groups itself that I've listened to that got me interested in continuing and pursuing my dubstep work. And he sent me a few videos of some of his performances and stuff with Nightcore and whatnot. And it's fucking amazing to be able to say, hey, I got to work with this guy. But, you know, it's people like Chuck Stegel and these other idiots out there that want to ruin my name just because I look a little bit different. It just, it really pisses me off. Like, they want to constantly put my stuff out there as their own, knowing I can't do shit about it right now. But I can promise you, the fucking minute I get the money to do everything that I want to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy those copyrights as soon as I can get the fucking money. Sis, you're always bored.
but you know, like, it just, it just irritates me, because, like, I bust my ass every fucking day to, you know, get my name out there, just so I can work with certain people who I've looked up to for a long time now. I mean, yes, I've worked with some people that, you know, I do look up to and are good friends with, even like Wiggs Wigan or Wig Wiggins, however the fuck you pronounce his name, I forget. Like, I'm always getting that one mixed up, but like, you know, I've done stuff for him. I've done stuff for a good friend of mine over in the UK. His name's Finley, but he goes by the artist named Evil. He's a UK music artist. He's a he's a battle rapper. The dude's fucking amazing, and he's actually working on his first production album, which I'm currently helping him out with. No, he can't pay me right now because he doesn't know how to transfer currencies. But, dude, I've listened to the guy, and I've respected him for a long time now. So I'm like, dude, like, there's no need to pay me right now, you know? Just pay me whenever you can. And I know him, like, he always does exactly what he says he's going to. Like, he always pushes my work. Always. But, you know, my point is, for all you guys out there that are bashing on me personally by stealing my stuff and claiming it as your own, just fucking stop. Like, what the fuck do you even think you're doing? You know those tracks don't belong to you. Yeah, I might look a little weird, but dude, who are you to come up and take my shit knowing, very well aware, knowing well of fucking where that those are my stuff, that that's my stuff, and that those tracks that I put out are mine. Like, who the fuck are you to do that shit? Hey, Rick, what up, man? I don't know if I can see or not, but what up, Rick? What's going on, bro? But, you know, like, I'm tired of this shit. You know, I've been busting my ass since late 2010, early 2011. The reason why I say late 2010, early 2011 is because I got interested in doing music around September, October, towards the end of 2010, but didn't actually get the chance to actually start doing it until around May of 2011. Like, February, May of 2011, that's when I first started. So, you know, like, I'm just honestly tired of it. Like, you know, I bust my ass every day. And people like Angel know it. Like, when I'm not talking to you guys, I'm usually busting ass. Like, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's fucked up that these people have the nerve to come in and take my shit knowing that I'm doing all this shit for a reason. Oh, hey, Starboy, what up, man? Never mind, I thought that you were Rick for a minute, bro. My bad. I do apologize for that. But if you guys don't know who... Who Starboy Jason... Lilac is, he's actually the newest... If you guys know me, you guys know I do have a gaming team as well. Called Extreme Speeds. We do drifting. But Starboy here is actually one of the newest members of the Extreme Speeds drift team. So, shout out to you, Starboy. What's good, bro? How you doing, man?
But honestly, guys, I just want to know why these people are doing this and who they are. Like, I don't know who these fucking people are that are doing it. But I'm honestly getting tired of seeing it happen. Because every day I bust my ass just to fucking get somewhere. Like seriously, like the other night, I literally got almost no sleep. Reason why? I was busy up all night connecting my YouTube to my SoundCloud, connecting my Facebook to my YouTube and SoundCloud. I was busy, you know, getting my stuff up on different sites that it needs to be on, like SoundClick, SoundCloud. Um, I created a new Reverb Nation. Um, I do have a new fan page called Demigod. I just uploaded it or did it the other day. So like that night, I literally stayed up for almost 24 hours, almost 48. You know, busting my ass, connecting everything just so I can, you know, establish, you know, my grounds. So I can establish some kind of you know, basis and some kind of foundation to build off of. But, you know, like, it just, it really pisses me off. Like, I thought I was over this whole getting my music stolen thing a long fucking time ago. I thought I was over all that, but I guess I was wrong. So I guess I'm going to have to do the one thing that I do not like doing and ruin my beats by having voiceovers say my name and production all over it. Just so that people can't fucking take it. Like, and I hate doing that because, for me, that just ruins the mood of the beat. Like, it ruins the track entirely. Like, I can see, you know, putting it in the very beginning at the intro and then at the very end. Because it doesn't ruin it as much. But having to put it in the middle, like, that just, for me, that just ruins the whole thing. But honestly, I'm fucking tired of having to do that. I shouldn't have to go in... And plaster my name all over every fucking thing that I do. And ruin the entire track just to keep it from being stolen. I shouldn't have to do that. But I guess I'm going to fucking have to. Because these little motherfucking thieves don't know how to keep their goddamn hands off my shit. And if you're one of those thieves that are watching this right now that I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm freaking tired of it. Like, it needs to stop. Believe it or not, Oreos actually do sound good right now. But, you know, just like, in general, like, you know, I'm so tired of my stuff being taken and, you know, reclaimed and copywritten over somebody else who has money. It's like nobody wants to give me a fucking chance to make it. And it's these other artists that when I put my stuff out there, when they see that I'm doing just as good as they are, they see me as a threat, so they want to lower me down to make me less of a threat. So what they do, so what do they do? They pull the chicken shit move and steal my stuff and put it out there as their own. How they take my work, I don't know. I don't understand that. Like, I don't get how they fucking do it. I really don't. Like, I never did understand how people get away with that, but... Because, you know, I don't do shit like that. Like, the only time I do stuff like, you know, download music from sites... 
is actually through, you know, Spotify. I go online and whenever Soldier Heart or somebody puts out a new album, yeah, I'll admit I go on there and download it for free. But the only reason why I download it for free is because I don't have the money to, you know, buy their stuff. Otherwise, I would. Because, believe me, I would love to own some Redcon one gear. I really would. But, you know, I don't have the money, so I do the next best thing I can. But, you know, it's these idiots that go around taking my stuff, thinking that they can take advantage of me. That just, it pisses me off. Like, I'm getting tired of being taken advantage of by these idiots downloading my shit and then reclaiming it as their own. And getting the rights to it. I'm getting fucking tired of it. Like it needs to fucking stop. I bust my ass every day. Non-stop. You know, like I do everything I need to do to put my stuff out there in the correct way. Because let me tell you guys something. Something I did not know that I looked back at on one of my original Reverb Nation accounts that I don't know if they still do, but they used to do, are rankings. Well, back when I first started my new Shadow Blade, my B-L-A-Y-D-E name, way back in 2013, ever since that day, I have stood at number one on Reverb Nation. I stand number one locally, number two nationally, regionally I stand at 13, and nationally I stand I think at like 45 or some shit like that when I last checked. So you know my rankings are up there and that's been over a few years now and they still stand at that same, that same status today. I'm literally one of the top music artists in the country. And do I have any money to support any of my stuff? No. But you know, I worked my ass off to hit that number one spot. I worked my ass off every day for six months when I first started out just to make it that far. And to see it climb over that stretch of time, like, do you have an idea how freaking much that means to me as a person in general and not just as an artist? Like, seriously. To see my stuff at number one, even after all these years, you know, it still, you know, is amazing to me. I mean, you know, like, being number one on Reverb Nation is a very big deal because that's where a lot of top artists get their start. And for me to be one of the top, literally the top one in Ohio so far is, like, that just doesn't happen. Hey, Brittany, what's up? But, you know, I'm honestly getting sick of it, you know? Like, dude, I'm one of the fucking top standing artists in the fucking country. And I've got no money. And for these guys to come and take, and take advantage of me like that out of nowhere, it's like, who the fuck are you to do that? I have stuff to back my, like, Everything I say that I can do, I am able to back up. Everything I say I do or have done, I have actually done and do. I can back that shit up for eons. I 
I mean, I've showed you guys how I make my music. I've showed you guys what I do. Granted, every time I bring up FL Studios, I do have to start over. Because that's how it works on my end for some reason. But, you know... You know, I'm just a simple music artist trying to make a name for himself and make a living off of what he does best. And what I do best is making music. Whether I'm producing trap beats for guys like Stephen Hobbs, or whether I'm putting out my own stuff as a dubstep artist. You know, it's what I do. That's my thing. Like, that's the one thing I fucking live and sacrifice for every day. And a lot of you guys might think, you know, oh, you didn't sacrifice that much and this and that. Well, yeah, I'll give you credit. I might not have sacrificed a lot money-wise, but time-wise, you know, I have sacrificed a lot and a lot of time. Because let me tell you guys something. One of the biggest gaming teams in the country just recently... Because if you guys know me, I do play Vanglory a lot. Which, if you guys play League of Legends or don't know what Vanglory is, it's kind of like League of Legends for the mobile device. And, you know, I'm literally one of the top players in the fucking country on League of Legends. And, yes, I did have my stuff put out on the Vanglory newsletter. Which, to me, that was honestly a surprise. I was honestly surprised to even see that. But one of the top teams in the country offered me a spot to come out to California and compete with them on their team. Because, you know, we work together on Vanguard all the fucking time. Well, I had to turn it down. I told them, I was like, look, like, I'll still play with you guys from where I'm at, but I cannot afford to make it out there and right now you know it just isn't a good time because I'm literally in the mu middle of putting out my first ever dubstep music album which was Urban Warfare and they totally understood and respected that So, you know, I've actually sacrificed a lot more than people think. I've sacrificed hanging out with people. I've sacrificed, you know, spending time with friends. And I've given up a lot of my personal life for this way of life. I've sacrificed a lot for my music career. And do I still live a normal life? Yeah, as much as I possibly can. But, you know, I'm just honestly sick of being taken advantage of. It's like... It's like, you know, anytime, like... And I've noticed this. It's like right when I start getting somewhere, somebody somewhere has to do something to fuck all that up for me. Well, guess what? I'm here to say to... Me being taken advantage of anymore, the shit stops right the fuck now. I'm tired of being taken advantage of. I'm tired of fucking having my shit stolen. Like, I'm sick of it. I don't have any money for copyrights. Yes, I might be one of the top producers in the country right now because of Reverb Nation. But so fucking what? That doesn't give you the fucking right to take my shit. I mean, like, if you guys want to, you know, borrow my stuff or buy it from me, say, hey, I want to buy this track from you and work on it and work with it. Don't sit there and take my shit acting like you're a badass. Because in the end, you're not a badass. In the end, you're just a no, another lonely bullshit fucking thief looking for a quick buck. For thievery. And can I prove it? That you guys did it? No. Because I don't have the money to. I don't have an attorney. I don't have ways to, you know, actually prove that. 
I mean, I could, but it would just be my word against yours. And in the end, the courts would favor you because you motherfuckers got money. I don't. So where is that fucking fair to me? And here's my question to every single one of you that are that is taking my stuff and have been taking my stuff over the years. Why? Why do it? I don't understand. Like, what did I ever fucking do to you to make you want to steal my shit? Because if I did something to you and I didn't know about it, I apologize. If... If you see me as a threat, I'm sorry. Oh, I know you would, Angel. I know you would. But, you know, like... I want to know why you guys feel like you have to take my stuff. Like I said, if you see me as being better than you or see me as a threat, I'm sorry that you see me as a threat. And I'm sorry that you see me as being better than you, but you want to know something? I don't see myself better as better than anyone. Like, I just don't see myself being better than anybody. I never have. I don't... You know, I don't think I'm better than any one person. Every artist is good in their own right, in their own respect. Okay? Every artist is, you know, good in their own way. I don't disrespect another artist. Even if you're just starting out, and, you know, and you're not that good, yeah, I'll tell you that it can be better, but at the same time, I'll show you respect because you're constantly trying. But with that being said, guys, I am going to hop off here. I am going to, you know, talk to that friend of Chad's and reach out to him and see what I can do. Because honestly, this shit's getting old really fucking fast. And Stephen Hobbs, if you're watching this, man, I do apologize for these idiots once again. For taking my stuff and me re-stealing it back. And claiming to it. Okay, I'll definitely see what I can do. But again, Steven, if you're watching this, man. I do apologize for these idiots taking my work. And claiming it as their own. Um, one of the ones I sent you was an older one. And I literally had to re-steal it back from these guys. And I guess they must have redone it again. But just know that everything I am sending you is my own. So don't worry about that. Like seriously, like, do not worry about that. Everything I send you is 100% authentically mine. As I said, I don't know why these people take advantage of me, but one person did say a while back that I look weird, so they're kind of constantly do what they can to, you know, take my shit. I don't know if they were just trolling or if they were just being serious or what, but to me, I take that serious. But again, Steven, I do apologize for everything that has transpired. Um, like I do still want to be able to work with you, but I just hope that you understand my situation a little bit better now. But with that being said, guys, this is Chance, aka Demigod, and I'll see you guys later, man.